Hi and welcome to this little demo of Mari's vector painting functionality. So the foundry in Mari 1.6 introduced pretty much out of the blue some vector functionality and there's a lot of confusion about how to use it, why to use it. So I thought I'd do a little tutorial, try to clear up some of the confusion at least. Now, there's a little word of warning first. Um, in order to fully use the vector functionality in inside your 3D application of choice, you will need shader support. Um, for example, things you can use it for is uh, grooming fur and hair, painting direction of anisotropic speculars, uh, driving directionality and flow of texture bombers, etc. But for the sake of argument, let's just say you don't have any of that and you still have the, all these new buttons that you don't know what to do with. So let's see what we can get out of Mari alone. I'm just going to start with my plane here. And there's a few new buttons. Um, there's this one up here which is enable vector inspection grid. Second one here is set up vector brush and vector default shaders. Um, to the left in the toolbar, there's a vector painting brush and the vector inspection grid settings. And in the painting modes, there's a few painting modes to deal with it, which is paint flow vectors, notch flow vectors, paint normal vectors, notch normal vectors, and scale vectors. Um, first thing to do, pretty much just we're in Mari 2 right now, so it's probably going to be a bit different if you're still on 1.6. Um, in Mari 2, just uh, set up your vector brush and vector default shader using this button. And you end up with a few new channels um, as well as some shaders, but we're going to ignore the shaders for now because it doesn't really matter that much. Um, each channel of the vector has uh, one layer and in this case this layer is shared across all these different channels because basically the difference between world space and screen space is literally just an adjustment layer on top of it to change the color. And when we start painting with our vector brush um, let's just go paint flow vectors and we get these crazy colors depending on the direction of our brush stroke and it's all still paint buffer based so if I don't bake it down it will just disappear my system is quite slow so hopefully I won't tax it too much um, kind of crazy what to do with it uh, if you go to the procedural tab here to procedural miscellaneous and to flow you can attach a tile to it to visualize your flow and I'm just gonna drag something over here and display the entire channel and we get this we get our tile and it's kind of moving already in the direction of brush stroke. And you can turn on the vector inspection grid. Go to your modify vector inspection grid settings and just change some of these. So maybe let me just turn this off for now. Because Mari will always evaluate the entire stack right now, unless I change these settings. Um, just to see the direction of our brush strokes and just change the line length, uh, line width, and line spacing a bit. It's kind of, you know, indistinct. Change the space we painted in screen space so we want to view the grid in screen space 
you can pretty much see exactly in what direction I painted. And this is how Mari evaluates this whole thing. So if I turn on flow and turn off the grid. This is kind of interesting, not very useful in, its, in itself. So I'm just going to turn on the animated button. Uh, you can change the repeat. Still not that that useful, you probably think. Although it is interesting. Uh, I'm just going to select my patch here and just fill it with black again, just to clear the vector crazies I did. And just paint some flow vectors. Um, I'm going to use the paint flow or not flow, because that will keep the vectors um, parallel to the surface, while paint normal and not normal will have vectors protruding out of the surface, which, uh, unless you do fur or hair, it's not really that interesting, I guess. So I'm just going to paint the flow vectors and select my flow layer, evaluate the entire stack so I see the result of the flow and you know just do something here. You can use it like a Photoshop liquify, you can use all the brush modes, you can use different brush tips, intensity, and just gently nudge my lines here. You might already see what I want to do here. Do some a base layer for some hand painted wood or something. And it'll always follow your brush direction. So, well, for the sake of argument, let's do it that. Obviously, I kicked him. You can still, you know, change all these settings and do little wood holes or whatever it's supposed to be. Knots will always stay the same. And you know you can keep this live uh, or you can flatten the entire channel and let, just make it a paint layer. So if I just do flatten, it will bake it all down and it'll just be a regular paint layer. Make that a little bit sharper as well because I got rid of the procedural. Um, let me just undo this and set up a new channel, do a something brownish, the base color, uh, duplicate this, make a layer mask and convert this to a mask group. Put this over here and just select my vector paint channel. Pull it down, control, shift, drag it over here which will share the entire channel. Select my group channel again and my color here. Make sure it's still inverted. So I'm just gonna use Mari's cool new adjustment layers. Let's invert the mask. And you know, it's a start for some procedural wood, I guess. And I've already done something. Pretty much the same system. You know, I've got my base brown, line brown, another line brown. Got a shared shared vector in here. And with this, just you know, something. Um, what else? Procedural stuff. 
more procedural stuff. Let's look at this for example. It's pretty interesting. Um, if we look at the vector field for this, we just evaluate top to bottom. See this craziness, which is kind of cool. What that actually is is you can now use literally any procedural to offset your your flow layer. So, for example, here I just get a regular cloud layer. Actually, let me have transparent, but it's just a regular cloud layer as you would create with procedural fractal cloud. And you can use that to offset your to offset your tile. Oh, it's all stuck. Mario 2 is still very new. I get used to everything. So you can see I'm changing the procedural, and actually my tile that attached to it changes as well, which is pretty damn nice. Because I can you can make really really cool stuff with it. And on this cloud layer, I actually have an adjustment stack, and I'm just using the scale to change the R, G, and B component of the cloud, which will affect the overall scale of stuff, which is really, really I mean, it's just so many possibilities you can do just procedural stuff, just patterns. Um, so it's pretty, pretty crazy. But let's disable this one for now. Get back to our default. Uh, like I said, any procedural is good to go. So if I'm taking cellular now and change the size here, I'm getting this. You know, I get full color on my flow. Uh, you can offset it with your with any other layer and even use the whole uh, painted vector field underneath just to either blend it together or use the blend modes for example um, with add it'll add the vectors together so you can still have directionality to everything and you know Kind of even groom it, I guess. You know, whatever you want. Some really weird stuff going on, but you get the idea. Um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, if you want to just, you know, export the pure flow map, which looks like this right now. Um, you can do that, use it in your 3D application if you have the choice or the possibility and shader support. Otherwise just make stuff out and use it as a starting point for some craziness, whatever you want to do. And I hope that gives you any, some ideas on how to use this stuff.